Good afternoon. On today's video, I'm going to try and demonstrate how to get intrap audio synths, such as iWave Station, to operate within Nano Studio 2. Now, Nano Studio itself is doesn't do, doesn't support intrap audio, so it's a bit of a workaround. And thanks, big shout out to Russ, who explained how to do this, and I'll try and demonstrate now. So we're going to use Audio Bus as our glue in this. If I fire Audio Bus up, a very useful app for connecting different uh, different uh, sound sources together. And what we're going to do to begin with is to click on our first input and let's pick iWay Station. That should launch up now. And that's iWay Station playing. I'm just using my, my MIDI controller for the purposes of that. Now, we don't need anything in the, in the middle um, box, which allows for um, including effects and, and other bits and pieces. But what we do need to do is look at the output. So we click on the output and we're going to be in apps and we'll select Nano Studio 2, which might seem a little bit strange, but bear with me. That's all launching up now. And if I press the keys now, there's no output because at the moment, iWave Station is outputting within Nano Studio, which doesn't make a lot of sense at this moment. So let's fire up Nano. Now I've opened, I've created a, a basic test project for this purposes, but essentially this is a brand new project. Um, I put some sample MIDI in there. But what we're going to do to begin with is add, just we'll have a, a normal Obsidian MIDI track. We've got this nice uh, saw. And we'll just put some MIDI notes in. So this is the, the MIDI notes that we would be looking for iWay Station to play. So if we just get this going, it seems to start on its own accord. We'll let it come around. It's not perfect. I don't think it's going to win any awards that, but that's not what we're here for. We've got the MIDI data in there now. If we double click on that one, that's our MIDI notes. But what, we, what we're trying to do is get Nano Studio to send those MIDI notes off to iWave Station. At the moment, it's just talking to itself. So if we go into the mixer and look into that track, we're going to move from the instrument being Obsidian to external MIDI. That's our first step. If we then have a look at this track, we can click on the little keyboard icon in the top corner. We can select iWay Station and MIDI Channel 1. Now, if you had other hardware doing different things, you would need to go into each of the different source synthesizers and select which MIDI channel you want and make sure this reflects on here. Otherwise, the wrong data will be, will be played to the wrong synths or they'll all play the same thing or all the things that you don't want to happen, basically. So at the moment, we've now told Nano Studio 2 that that little bit of MIDI, which we've just recorded, is now going to be sent to the iWave station on MIDI channel 1. Now, if we get ourselves back to the main screen. If we just set it playing, funnily enough, nothing's happening. And the reason this is, is the MIDI data has been sent to iWave Station, but iWave Station's got nowhere to output it. So that's why we can't hear anything. What we need to do now is to head over to Slate. And this is where the, the magic within Nano Studio happens. Because Nano Studio currently, at least, doesn't have audio files. The only way we can get audio in, in this manner is by using the sampler within Slate. And it's a bit of a workaround, but it works. So let's fire up Slate. And if we open up a blank uh, kit, which 
is called a test in this case, but essentially create an initialized set, set of uh, drum pads and away you go. Uh, I can do another video on that to explain should that be needed. So at the moment I've got sort of drum pad one selected. And what we're going to do now is go up to the sample option. Now, this is where you would normally load a sample in, but what we're going to do here is have iWaveStation sample into Nano Studio. So if we hit the record button, we, we, we bring up the recording page, which would normally, we'd hit record and sample in whatever we were sampling in, and then we can play around with the sample. So what we'll do first is we shall hit the sequencer button. Now this will just set our MIDI roll running. And that nice little pingy sound is our iWave station doing its stuff, which is exactly what we want. So let's just stop that, hit it back to the beginning. And this time we'll hit record and then hit the sequencer. And this is now sampling itself into Nano Studio. So we've done our recording, we will hit OK. And there we have it, this is our sample. Obviously we've got a bit of space at the start and the end, so we need to, to crop this down. So we shall, I'll do this very rough and ready because it's not a, not something I'm going to be keeping this. Uh, right, so having done that, uh, go to actions, hit trim. If we press play, this is playing the our sample now. So what we have here now is a recording of iWave Station rather than the MIDI playing iWave Station live. So you need to get your MIDI right first, get the recording right because that's what you're stuck with. Um, I'll leave it like that. It's not perfect, but uh, it demonstrates what we're trying to do here. So sample modified, we want to save our changes. So save as, recording one already exists. So if we call it iWave, hit save. We can now see iWave is appearing in our Slate Drum Kit. Um, we'll look at the pads. We've got different options. We've got the one shot, we've got sustain, we've got sustain and loop. So one shot, you press it, it goes off and plays a sample in whole. Which may well be what you want. It's, as I say, it's looped a little bit further than it should have done there. Sustain, only triggers the sample when you're holding. Now, the reason you might want to use sustain over one shot is that when you actually record the information into our MIDI roll, um, the MIDI notes, if you, if you want to see the whole section being played, you want to make sure that um, you, your finger's on, on, the, on the sample the whole time, otherwise you just get the initial trigger and there'll be nothing else sh showing within the MIDI roll as to what's going on. Let me demonstrate. If the sustain is on, um, we shall go and record this in, hopefully without making a mess of it. Um, well, that was pretty terrible. Let's try that again, shall we? So that's now recorded into our MIDI. Let's have a look. And within our, our slate, we've now got that MIDI note there, which is our sample being played. Had I just had it on one shot, let's let's do that as a as, as a separate uh, track, shall we? So can we do this? Um, yeah, the easiest way, I guess, is on. Track two, we'll do it as a one shot. We will 
load in, if we can find it, what was it called, iWave, there we go. So that's playing it all in one go. Oh, that a second. Oh, yep. Yeah. So if we duplicate our string so it carries on and we'll get rid of the, the loop. We'll hit record. So we're getting the same effect in terms of the recording, but uh, if we then go on to the MIDI itself, we'll just see that one shot is showing up as a, as just one very small MIDI note. And from that, you can't tell how long that uh, recording is actually going to go on for. I do apologize. We seem to have a hailstorm at the moment. So if you can hear stuff crashing in the background, it's the weather. Nothing more than that. Right, so I think we're pretty well done there. If we just play, have a look at what we've got here. We've got our recorded sample on our slate track. We've got our strings, which were just from Obsidian. And then we've got this guide MIDI data, which Nano Studio was using to play the iWave station. So this isn't actually doing anything any in terms of the output of the project now. So we can see it's all playing quite nicely. And you can see even though that's just that little one shot, it's carrying on playing. And it might just be personal preference. You might be quite happy with the one shot thing, but in terms of a visual representation of what's going on from what you can actually hear, I would recommend using the, the sustain option to in order to um, to re record your samples. It just makes it a lot easier to see what's going on. Well, I hope that was helpful. If you've got any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Um, if you like the video, please um, give me a thumbs up and please subscribe to the channel if you're not doing so already. And hopefully that's helpful and I, sh I shall see you in the next one. Bye for now.